What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and thank you for joining me. If this is your first time, you're going to want to go ahead and subscribe now because today I'm excited to introduce to you the next project at Crossroads Rebuild, my 2017 Ford Police Interceptor Utility. Guys, this is a 2017 Ford Police Interceptor Utility. It's the police version of the Explorer, and this came from a police department in South Indiana. This vehicle is only two years old and has 29,000 miles on it, and obviously, as you can see, it has had a pretty decent front-end impact. I'm excited about this build, though, because not only is it a relatively new vehicle that I can have a lot of fun with, uh, but this is going to give us an opportunity on the channel to do a little bit of everything. Let's go ahead and take a tour and see what we're going to be working with. So let's go ahead and start the tour of the Interceptor here on the inside. And as you can see, the interior of the Interceptor is just a very plain, uh, basic version of the, of the Civilian Explorer. Now, let's talk about crash stuff first. First of all, you can see that all three airbags here in the front have gone off. Now, thankfully, none of the side airbags or seat airbags went off, but all three, all three of the front ones did. Uh, the driver's steering wheel airbag and the passenger knee airbag won't be a big deal to replace, but unfortunately the one going off in the dash does mean that I'll be replacing this dash, and we'll talk about that in a little while, but this is going to be something new for me. I've never replaced the dash in a vehicle. But while we're in here, let's also talk about a few of the things that make the police version a little bit unique. Well, for starters, you can see that there's no center console. Uh, usually the police version, they have their own special console inserted here, uh, which of course they took out after, they, uh, after the vehicle was wrecked and they decommissioned it. But there is some of the interesting stuff still in here, such as this dome light up here, which Ford puts in special for the police versions. There's actually two of them. There's one in the back, and it's this giant LED dome light for doing paperwork, and there's also a red mode so they don't uh, lose their night vision at night. Also, this is probably one of the coolest things they left in the vehicle. It's still got the original spotlight here on the front, which I'm excited to hook up and give a try uh, a little later on. So that's kind of neat to have. Other than that, it's just a really basic interior of an Explorer. I'll go ahead and show you the back in a, in a little while. The back is full of parts from the accident that they've given us. Most of them are no good, but we'll go through that stuff and uh, take a closer look at that in a minute. All right, so let's take a look at the front where obviously the main part of the damage is on this vehicle. I was involved in a front end collision and uh, there's a lot to show you here. So let's actually start on this side, driver's side, where it's a little bit less going on. Uh, there's just a little bit of tweaking here to the bracket on the end of the frame rail, uh, but the frame rail is nice and straight still, no big deal there. Uh, up here, no damage or anything, the fender is fine and they've bundled up uh, all the wiring and such to get it out of the way. Actually, it's another interesting fact about the Interceptor is there's a lot of extra wiring in it that you would not find in, um, in a regular civilian version of the Explorer. That's not something the police department adds. Ford actually puts it in there from the factory so that they have lots of uh, options for adding lights, sirens, and so on and so forth. So anyway, as far as damage goes on this side, just a little bit here to the end of the frame rail, but no big deal. Um, up in here, uh, they've removed the battery in the battery tray, uh, but there's really nothing else going on over here. Now over on this side, uh, you can see obviously there's no radiator, there's no condenser or anything like that. That stuff was removed. Uh, this is an auxiliary uh, oil cooler, I believe, and it is damaged, so it's going to have to go. <clears throat> but as I was taking a look at this thing uh, in, the, um, in the auction yard at IAA, uh, I saw a few things that were probably the most concerning, and they're all over on this side. So the passenger side of the vehicle took the brunt of the impact. Uh, this fender over here is pretty messed up. There's a little bitty dent here, no big deal. Uh, but the frame rail is bent a little bit. Obviously the bracket here in the front is pretty gnarly. Uh, and then there is a little bit of a kink over here, and the frame rail is pulled this way. Now, I've got a buddy that's done framework and bodywork for me before, 
and uh, he's going to be able to do this. We're going to try to pull it, but we may end up actually having to section that out and weld in a replacement. Not sure yet, uh, but he is confident that, that will not be a problem to fix. Um, but down here, when I was looking at it at the, the salvage yard, this is one thing that you couldn't tell uh, on the pictures uh, online. And this is why it's so important to go look at these things in person, because if I had bought this without ever going to look, this would have been a nasty surprise. Unfortunately, this engine is toast. You can probably tell, or you might be able to tell there on the camera, that it's sitting at a weird angle, and that is not how Ford put this thing in, uh, in the car in the first place from the factory. My first clue that something was wrong was it did look like it was sitting at an odd angle, and then I noticed that the air conditioning compressor is actually touching the subframe, and that obviously doesn't look right. Um, and then I also noticed there's a crack in the valve cover. Um, that's not a big deal. Valve cover is easy enough to replace. But all of this weirdness over here, I got to investigating a little bit more. Why is it sitting this way? And actually over on this side, and I'll show you a close up, but over on this side, the uh, motor mount that actually supports this thing broke off from the block. And not only did it drop the engine down, uh, but it actually pulled a chunk of the block out when it happened as well. So at 29,000 miles, unfortunately, this engine is toast. Uh, in addition to the, the broken block and the uh, damaged valve cover, uh, which are obviously the most important, uh, a few other odds and ends such as uh, this air conditioning line, uh, the actual AC compressor unfortunately uh, are damaged, the uh, oil cooler here on the front, uh, is uh, there's a uh, pipe coming out of it that's kinked. Uh, just a lot of the miscellaneous things that happen in these kinds of accidents uh, are damaged. So unfortunately, um, this engine's going to have to go. We'll talk about what I've got uh, in store to fix that coming up, uh, but uh, that is one of the biggest problems with this vehicle. It's not even the frame damage, it's that engine being shot. One other interesting thing, you can tell from this uh, hood that they didn't total this thing at first sight. They actually did start a disassembly. Um, like I said, a lot of the parts are in the back, and some of those parts were removed, not broken in the accident and left on the ground. Um, and you can also tell by looking at this hood, they actually started to repair it. I'm guessing, based on the, the fender here, that it probably had a little bit of damage over on this side. And um, they have fixed it. The hood is straight, and they primed it and everything. So um, I'll probably have to reprime it and sand it and all of that, because obviously the whole thing is going to be painted now. Uh, but this, they were obviously thinking about fixing this thing at one point. Not sure if the hood hinges are good or not. It, uh, it looks to me like they took the hood off and it now sits a little bit to that side. Uh, so it may just need to be straightened up or it could be I need to get new hood hinges. I'll investigate that a little bit closer. This fender is shot. I'm uh, going to have to replace that. Uh, other than that, it also, you can tell, got pushed back into this door. Now here's one of the things that I'm not sure about yet. This door does latch but it is pushed back a little bit. It does not shut quite all the way. I believe that is probably because the hinges were damaged, um, but we're not gonna actually know that until we take the door off. So hopefully there's not really any damage there, but again, my buddy who does the framework is gonna look at that and get that taken care of. But this door is toast, uh, obviously, because it's, you know, it's folded up. Maybe somebody can fix it, but it's not worth my time. I'll be able to salvage the, uh, the mirror and the inner door panel and the, you know, components and stuff, uh, but the door itself will be trash. But moving along the rest of the side of the vehicle, the rest of it from the back door back is just fine. Uh, here's another interesting fact that I learned uh, in the process of, of buying this vehicle, and that is I was looking at auction pictures thinking that I'm going to have to paint these doors because obviously I'm not going to leave them white. I don't want it to be black and white once it's done. Uh, and then I discovered that these uh, doors are not painted white. It's actually a vinyl decal and it'll pull right off. It's vinyl wrapped uh, and it'll pull right off. Um, the police department pulled their letters off. Obviously, you can still tell who it is. Uh, but once I peel all of this vinyl wrap off the doors, uh, that'll go away and it'll just be a black painted door underneath there. Uh, and hopefully that paint's in good shape. Probably be some cleanup, but hopefully the paint's in good shape. Let's go ahead and walk around the back of the, uh, the interceptor here. I pulled a Carfax on the interceptor before I purchased it, and um, I actually found that within uh, the very first month that the police department owned it, it was wrecked um, almost immediately. It had less than 300 miles on it when it was in its first accident. Uh, it was hit by a drunk driver, uh, rear-ended, and uh, they replaced the bumper and the rear hatch and repainted it. 
Uh, so it's missing a couple of decals that it would have had on there from the factory. Uh, and if you look closely, it's dirty right now, but if you look closely, you can tell the paint uh, the color is a great match, but the finish is not a perfect match. So we may end up, after we paint the other parts of this thing, may end up uh, sanding this down and smoothing it out, maybe re-clear it or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but it did, they did a good job on the fix. It was in another minor fender bender, which I believe is probably where this scuffing on the back came from. Nothing major there. Uh, but other than that, around back, it is just fine. Very plain Jane, simple like the, uh, the police versions are everywhere else as well. Uh, but other than that, not much to see back here. And then finally around the driver's side, not a whole lot to see here either. This side is just fine. Again, the, the vinyl wrap will come off of these doors and, um, and they'll be cleaned up uh, and they'll just be nice black doors. And that fender's good. The only other thing here is the, the channel up here, the weather stripping in the top of the roof there is peeling back a little bit. So I'll find a way to fix that or replace it or something. Maybe I'll put a roof rack on it. All right, so here in the interior, the back in, uh, back of the interceptor here, uh, a whole lot of parts. Now, a few of these, like um, this here, uh, here, I've already pulled the seat belts and stuff out of this thing to send them off to be rebuilt, uh, and I'll talk about that some more at the end of the video. So a couple of those things I did, uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at a lot of the parts that they left in here. Here's the battery tray uh, that they pulled out of it. Uh, it is broken, so I'll probably go ahead and have to replace that. Um, Toss some things aside here. Uh, this uh, sits up on top uh, above the, the grill, which would be on this side. This sits kind of on top of the radiator. It's broken as well, so I'm going to have to replace that. A lot of interior trim pieces um, that they pulled off when they were stripping the lights and stuff out of it. There's a lot of that sort of thing. Um, this is a damaged, uh, looks like an AC line. We'll be looking to replace that. Um, got the... Uh, Hood latch here in the front. That actually looks fine, so hopefully I won't have to replace that. Got the alternator. Leave it right there for now. But I've got the alternator there. Looks like part of the exhaust, I guess. Um, this is the remnant of the core support, the radiator core support. Uh, it does have uh, the hood prop still on it, so that's good. And it has a few uh, little, um, you know, little brackets and clips and stuff. So I'm glad that they left it here for me, so I can get some of those parts and not have to buy them. Uh, but the core support itself is trash. I think that's an insulator for the battery, uh, for the air box. I think over here we got the resonator for the air box. Um, I have no idea what that is. It's rubber, so I'll figure that out. This looks like a cowling panel. It's shaped kind of like that, but I'm not sure. I'll look into that. Um, we've got the driver's side uh, wheel well liner back here. The passenger one, for whatever reason, was left on it which I'll have to pull off, but we've got that. Got the washer bottle here, um, which unfortunately is uh, pretty well damaged, so I'll be replacing that. Got our horns um, and a few other miscellaneous components. Looks like some radiator hoses and the resonator. Um, so just a lot of miscellaneous. Thankfully, they left me my um, windshield wipers back here. Uh, so just a lot of miscellaneous components that a lot of which are still usable, or at least they have usable parts on them. Uh, but a lot of it I'll be replacing as well. Now, one notable thing that you'll see that's actually missing back here is there is no back seat. Uh, the, the police interceptor comes with uh, some rugged black fabric seats here in the front for the front two passengers. And then the rear seats are a black vinyl. Uh, they look pretty nice. Actually, they kind of almost look like leather, uh, but they're not in this vehicle. So um, I guess the police department probably wasn't using them uh, at the time of the accident, and so I didn't get them which is kind of a bummer, but I'm going to try to source some. I may even call, contact that police department and see if they'll sell them to me uh, because it would be really nice to have some back seats in here and make it a lot more useful that way. Other than that, not a whole lot to see. I mean, it's a pretty basic interior, black everything. Uh, it's got another one of those um, uh, overhead lights, like I mentioned before, up front, same thing. Uh, and other than that, pretty simple and basic interior. So I'll be going through all of these parts to kind of get a better look at them and see what I can salvage and what I have to replace. Uh, but I'm thankful that they did save some of the parts for me. All right, had to switch cameras because the other one died, but I've hooked up the battery and I'm going to go ahead and try to start the electrical. Can't start the vehicle, but I'm going to try to start the electrical. Now, I don't know if this will work or not because there's a lot of stuff un, uh, unhooked right now. So I don't know what will work and what won't, but I'd like to see if I can bring at least some life uh, to at least the, uh, the dash of this thing. So let's see what happens here. I don't hear anything. That's not a good sign. Nothing. We got nothing here. We got nothing. All right, bear with me. 
Let's see if I can find a nut to put on that ground and see if that's it. Be right back. All right, well, I don't have a nut that'll hold that ground in place, but when I touched it earlier, it sparked. So I'm gonna try hooking the negative back up and we'll see if we've got any life. It may work, it may not. I'll otherwise have to find a nut, maybe from the Ford dealer that'll fit that ground. Let's give it a shot and see what happens here. I hear a ding dong inside. Let's get in the dead. Let's get inside. You hear that? We've got that stereotypical Ford ding a dong. All right. Look at that. I'll take this driver door ajar. Well, the mileage just went away. Yeah, we got every malfunction under the sun here. Let's turn this off. It showed the mileage when it first started and then it went away. <laughs> so I don't know what the, t the deal is with that. Maybe turn it off and back on again. Yeah. Yep, I think that's what we're going to do. We are going to turn this off and back on. Hey, there's the mileage right there. 29,318.1, which is exactly what they said. And then it goes away for whatever reason. Engine coolant over temp. I don't think that it is, but all right. Well, then we got this over here. Yeah, it's going to fuss at us here because of all the errors. Yeah, I know she's not happy. Anyway, all right. Um, radio, radio works. We won't mess with that. Uh, there's no CD media. I don't think that does anything in the police version, although we may unlock that. All right, so let's see if the fan works. Oh yeah, fan works, that's great. Defrost fan. I'll turn off the AC because that's not gonna do anything. All right, very good. And all right, well, good. So we've got life in this thing and uh, go ahead and hand that back to Erica. So um, that's cool to see, we've got life in it. I'll go ahead and turn it off so I don't bleed my battery down. So let's go ahead and talk about um, what we're gonna do with this thing. Okay, so let's talk about the interceptor and what my plan is for it. Um, first and foremost is obviously to fix it. We're gonna have to replace the engine. Uh, we're going to have to replace the dash and all the airbags. We're going to have to get the body in the front rebuilt and all of that frame straightened and so on. All the obvious stuff. Um, but this is such a low mileage vehicle that I think I'd like to have a little bit of fun with it. And this is where you're going to come in. I have some ideas for some things I'd like to do to it, but I would love to know what some of your ideas are for what I could do with this thing. So first and foremost, after I build it, I want to build it in such a way that it obviously isn't a police car anymore, but I want to pay homage to what it was. I want it to be obvious that this, this was a police car at one point and do some cool things with it. Maybe add in some of the, not the same kind of lights they had on as a police car because obviously that wouldn't be legal. You can't run the red and, and blues anymore. Uh, but maybe some white lights, some amber lights, where they're legal to do so. I'll have to look into the laws here in Indiana and see what I'm allowed to do. But um, anyway, so I might add in some of the lights. Maybe we'll put a push bar on the front of it and make it nice and aggressive looking. Um, but I would love to hear your ideas for some of the things that you think I should do to this thing uh, to dress it up and make it look real sharp, but also pay homage to, to what it was, that it was a police interceptor. Um, but I also want to make it super practical and usable as an SUV because I'm going to start using this as my daily driver. So in addition to making it cool and paying homage to what it was as a police interceptor, I also want to make it practical as a usable daily civilian vehicle. So obviously I'm going to have to find a back seat to put in it um, and, uh, and just make it usable in that way. This vehicle would be great because I've got two Greyhound dogs and they don't fit very well in that BMW. So this will be great for hauling them around. Uh, but tell me some of your ideas in the comments below for what you think I should do to this thing as well. But besides all that, I've got a few other ideas for some things that I think will be pretty cool that I'll share with you later. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up for this one. In the next episode on the Interceptor, 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it into the shop and start doing the tear down. Remove the engine, remove the fender, the hood, and all that stuff, and just basically get the front end stripped down and ready to go to my buddy's frame shop because we're gonna have to get that repaired before we can do anything else to it. So the next episode you'll see, we'll work on all that. And in the next episode, I'll also tell you a little bit about what I've got planned for the replacement motor. I hope you're as excited about it as I am because I got a doozy of a deal on that. Tell you about that in the next episode. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I hope you're excited about it. Like, share, comment, subscribe, click the bell so you can be notified each time I upload a new episode. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.